This is boron. Boring yet fascinating. Let's make some. Boron is a weird element. It's a lustrous crystalline metalloid. You won't come into contact with it in its elemental form as it has few uses. Boron starts to shine when you bond it to other elements. It's a chemist's best friend. Borosilicate glass makes up almost all the glassware in the lab. The boro suffix is thanks to the inclusion of boron trioxide in the glass. Adding the boron decreases the glass's thermal expansion, making it more shock resistant than ordinary soda lime glass. This shock resistant property makes it useful for equipment under a constant thermal gradient. Now with that tangent out of the way, it's boron time. Borax is a hydrated sodium boron salt with this formula. It can be found in nature as is. Borax is commonly used as a flux and household cleaning supply. I only want the boron from the borax. To do this, I will convert it to boric acid. I begin by weighing out 500 grams of borax. I then dissolve the borax in 1000 milliliters of distilled water with the help of heating from a hot plate. Borax is quite soluble in boiling water. I add the borax slowly to not bog down the stir bar. And once fully dissolved, I then add in 315 milliliters of 32% hydrochloric acid. Adding the acid creates boric acid, sodium chloride, and water. I allow the reaction to heat and carry out for around 20 minutes to ensure a complete reaction. I then remove the beaker from heating and allow it to cool to ambient temperature. Once cool enough, I place it into an ice bath. The cooling drops the boric acid out of solution, and the soluble sodium chloride remains. The boric acid is then transferred to a filter funnel and washed with cold ice water. If you desire highly pure boric acid, a recrystallization step can be done. But for my purposes, baseline is good enough. The next step is to turn the boric acid into boron trioxide. To do this, the boric acid is heated above 530 degrees Celsius. Heating decomposes the acid. I place the boric acid onto a pan and start heating. Boron trioxide is quite sticky and will ruin any container you use. It's also cost the glassware. I used a non-stick pan, which worked great. It was easy to stir and over the course of an hour, all the oxide became clearish. As soon as the bubbling stopped, this meant the reaction was over. The bubbling is caused by release of water from the reaction. The boron trioxide, even though it was on a nonstick pan, stuck a little and was had to be removed with a scraper. The boron trioxide is then collected and ground up into a powder. This part took the longest. I used a rubber mallet to aid in crushing, and we were left with a fine powder after a long while. Next time, I'll use a ball mill. I place the powdered trioxide into a drying oven to ensure dryness for the next step. Once all the boric acid is turned into oxide, powdered, and then dried, the next step can begin with the reduction of boron. The magnesium reduces the boron trioxide to boron. I want a high reaction temperature, so sulfur was added to the mix to add heat to the reaction. I mixed 110 grams of magnesium with 50 grams of boron trioxide and 75 grams of sulfur powder. I used the bag method to make sure that all parts were thoroughly mixed.
The charge is then loaded into a crucible. I used a larger crucible filled with sand to keep the reaction vessel together. I found without it the ceramic shatters and all the boron is lost, as shown in the opening clip. The reaction is started with a piece of magnesium ribbon and sparklers. The reaction here is a thermite reaction. The magnesium strips away oxygen from the boron trioxide to produce magnesium oxide and boron metal. The sulfur was added to form magnesium sulfide, which produces heat and helps the reaction forward. Once the reaction has cooled and the crucible is able to be touched, I remove the crucible shards and place them into a beaker full of water. The water will hydrolyze the slag produced, such as compounds like magnesium sulfide. Once all reactions stopped, I transferred the material to another beaker filled with hydrochloric acid. This removes undesired reaction products such as magnesium oxide. It also reacts with magnesium diboride to release borane and diboranes. So it should be done slowly and in a ventilated area due to the gas's toxicity, also its flammability. I stirred the beaker a few times and over the course of two days, all the soluble acid reactive products were dissolved. I removed and rinsed the broken crucible shards. Some boron will be lost here due to sticking with the ceramic, but most was removed. Unfortunately, tiny shards of ceramic could not be pulled out with the forceps, so I need to employ a trick. By transferring the material to a large beaker with water, we can suspend the fine boron particles while the heavy ceramic sinks to the bottom. After this, I used a vacuum filtration to remove the liquid. The filter traps the boron. This took a while as the fine boron clogged the filter. The boron is washed with water and the filter paper was dried in an oven. Plenty of our boron product was lost in the reaction on the ground and due to being unable to separate it from the ceramic shards. Another significant problem with this reaction is it produces impure boron mixed with magnesium boron compounds. If I was to do this reaction again, I'd probably use thicker magnesium shavings to slow down the reaction and allow it to stay more contained in the crucible. It's important to not use magnesium powder for this reaction as it could explode, like seen with copper thermite. Now dry, here is our final boron product, 5.88 grams of boron.